As guitar players, we are all drawn to the sound of a guitar plugged into a really loud, big guitar amp. That's a sound that is very exciting to use. And you know, if you're playing in a band or you're playing live, that's really the sound you want behind you. But when you practice at home, you can't really have that sound because you may have some noise restrictions which prevent you from cranking your amp at home. Now, the idea of practicing at home through a small combo can sometimes feel like you're giving up a part of your sound but it doesn't have to be that way. In this video, we're gonna be checking out this brand new amp from the guys at Blackstar that can give you that big sound in your bedroom. This is the Blackstar ID Core 40 version four. So the ID Core line of amps has been in Blackstar's catalog for quite some time. This is actually the fourth iteration of that type of amp now. This one is available in a couple of different sizes, but the one I have here is the 40 watt version. So this is essentially a practice amp, but it's a loud practice amp, but it's jam packed full of different sounds and different effects. So if you are practicing at home with this, you're not really compromising on some of the sounds you could possibly get from your bigger rig. The ID Core amps are very competitively priced, so much so that they actually appeal to quite a big part of the market. If you're a beginner player and you're looking for an amp to you know, learn how to play on and really cut your teeth, but have access to a huge range of sounds, this is a great starting point. But also, if you're an experienced player and you use a lot of different sounds on a regular basis, but playing at home restricts you from having access to these sounds, this is also a great option because it has so many different things jammed inside of it. So in this video, we're gonna check out all of the different things this amp can offer. But before we do that, I wanna let you guys know this is not a sponsored video. So Blackstar are not paying me to make this video, but they have provided me with this amp for the purpose of making the video. But as always, all the thoughts and opinions contained in the video are my own. Okay, so the first thing to note is that the one I have here is the ID Core 40. That is the 40 watt version. So this amp comes in three different sizes. You've got the ID Core 10, which is the 10 watt, which has two three inch speakers. You've got the ID Core 20, which is the 20 watt, which has two five inch speakers. And then the ID Core 40, which is this one, the 40 watt version, which has two six and a half inch speakers. Aside from that, all the other core features of these amps are pretty much the same across the board. This and the 20 watt one have a foot switchable option. The 10 watt doesn't have that, but everything else contained within the amp is pretty much across the entire series. So this amp is jam packed full of different effects, voices, and all sorts of other things. It's also a stereo amp. So what that means is you're actually getting a full stereo signal from both the speakers on this amp. Now that's quite hard to replicate in a video format because even if I mic'd up both the speakers and panned them, you wouldn't really get the full effect of what this thing is actually doing in the room. To really kind of understand how Blackstar used this super wide stereo imaging, you really have to hear one of these in person because I've never actually played a series of practice amps that fill the room as much as the ID Core stuff does. The actual speakers make the amp feel wider and bigger than the actual size that it is, because really we're still working with two six and a half inch speakers here, but playing this really kind of feels like it fills up the space around me, which is something that a bigger amp would do. And this is why I think it's great for, you know, pro players who use big rigs, but don't want to compromise when they're playing at home. You can still kind of feel like you're playing quite a big rig with this, which I think is really cool. Now, Obviously, like I said, that's really hard to replicate on video because you would just kind of feel like you were getting a left and right feed if I panned it with two mics. So I've just got it mic'd up with one mic today. But if you do get the chance to check one of these out yourself, please do because you will really see what I mean about that really wide stereo imaging. I've never quite heard a small amp that does it as well as this does. Now, on top of the amp, we've got a lot of different things going on. So the first thing we've got is a voice switch. So we have six different voices. Now, each of these voices, you can think of as like a different type of amp. So we've got a clean warm and a clean bright setting. So the clean warm is clean, but it's nice and warm. It's got a nice chimey top end, but a really kind of full but loose low end. The clean bright mode is a little bit more of a kind of boutique amp feeling. It's a bit snappier, a bit punchier, but also when you crank it up a bit more, it breaks up in that nice boutique amp kind of way. Crunch is a really nice kind of, you know, low to medium gain channel. If you're getting into your blues and your classic rock, that's a great place to start. 
Super Crunch is very similar, but with a little bit more juice in there. It's a bit harder hitting than the regular Crunch Channel. Super Crunch also has a tighter low end. So imagine you've got a, you know, a medium gain amp and you've got like a tube screamer running in the front just to tighten up that low end. It kind of does that. Then we have OD1. This is where we start going into the higher gain territories of what the amp could do. The user manual refers to the OD1 channel as like a hot rodded master volume type amp. So, I mean, you know what that kind of sound is. Think big British sounding amp, lots of mids, but the controllable master volume so you can really get those higher gain sounds. And then OD2 is even more high gain, more kind of mid pushed and a bit more articulate. And it's a little bit tighter in the low end. It's got a little bit less low end than OD1. OD1 is kind of a bit fuller in the lows. And then OD2 is a little bit more cutting. So that's really useful for your kind of high gain American sounds. We need that real tight kind of snappy low end sound. Then we have the gain control. This controls the amount of gain that you're feeding into your voice. The volume control is the output volume. This is also linked to an attenuation button here, which goes from 40 watt mode when the light is off down to one watt mode. So again, if you're practicing at home and 40 watts is too loud, you can bank this down to one watt. The 10 and 20 watt versions also have that attenuation switch down to one. ISF, which controls your kind of mid shift. So in this position, you've got a little bit more of a mid scoop, kind of like an American sounding amp. And in this position, you've got more of a mid pushed sound like a British sounding amp. And then you can kind of set that to taste. In the absence of a treble and bass control, I kind of find that all of the voices are quite well balanced in the lows and highs. So you can actually use the ISF kind of as a mid boost or cut and really kind of fine tune the tone. Even though there's only one tonal shifting control there, it's quite flexible. Then we've got the effects section. We've got three buttons to enable three different types of effects. We've got reverbs, we've got delays, and we've got modulations. When the light is green, that enables this section. So this is now in edit mode for the modulation. If I turn it off, that's off now. The green light always signifies what's on. The red light signifies that something is on, but it's not currently in the sort of edit mode as it were. So I'm just gonna turn all those off for now. Each of these has four different types based on these segments here. So the reverb has four different segments here, which is gonna be a room reverb, a hall reverb, a spring reverb, and a plate reverb. Inside the segment, from the bottom of the segment up to the top of it is the size of the reverb. And then the level control here is the reverb level. So obviously we can push the reverb a little bit louder if we need to. In the modulations, we have a phaser, on the first control. This controls the phaser mix and this controls the depth. The second segment is chorus and flanger. We've got the morph. So the lower this is, it's kind of more chorusy and the higher it is, it's more flanger. This controls the mix of that with the clean signal. And you'll notice the tap tempo is flashing here, which controls the speed of the chorus or flanger effect. Number three is the envelope. So this is kind of like an auto wah. This controls the sensitivity and this controls the depth of the envelope. And then we have the tremolo. This is the frequency modulation depth. So that's how intense the tremolo is. This is the amplitude modulation depth. And this is the speed on the tap tempo switch. And then we have delays. Segment one is a linear delay. This controls the feedback, this controls the delay level, and this controls the tap tempo. Those functions are the same for all the delays. So we have the linear delay, which is like a digital delay. Analog, which is a little warmer, kind of more like an old school delay. Segment three is tape delay, so we're going to get a little bit of modulated warble on that as well. And section four is a multi-delay, which is kind of like a rack mount style delay think of like the edge where you've got two kind of conflicting delays going on at the same time pretty useful tool if you want those soundscapey sort of effect sounds so aside from that you've also got the manual switch now when the manual switch is lit up all of this is just down to your own control if you press the manual switch and the light goes off you actually then go into preset mode so each position here has a different preset from the factory. Now you can use this to create your own presets as well. You can have six different presets, one for each of the voices, which you can also switch between with the foot switch. Or like I said, you turn that light on and this is just a one sound in manual mode setup. We have a headphone output there, 
which also outputs to cab rig, which we'll go on to in a moment, and a line in here for streaming directly to your iOS device or your mobile phone or whichever way you want to live stream, this amp can do that as well. A USB port here, which allows you to connect this to your PC and use it as a four channel USB audio interface. And this is where the foot switch goes. If you connect this to your computer with a USB, you can actually access Architect, which is Blackstar software where you can run Cabrig from. This comes with a version of Cabrig known as Cabrig Lite. I've actually done a video on Cabrig and Architect for the St. James series of amps, which is linked in the top corner of this video now. Cabrig gives you a speaker emulation, so there's loads of different speakers to choose from, mic placements and so on. I've already done a video on this for the St. James series of amps, so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail for this. But there is a slight difference. The version I did in that video is the full version, which you get with the St. James. This is Cabrig Lite. So the principles are the same, but it's a slightly less feature-packed version of the same thing. But if you use this output here, you're going to send an emulated speaker sound to the PA system or to the mixing desk, whichever way you've got this set up. So you don't have to mic this up on stage. You can run out of this straight into the PA and use digital cabin emulations. So spec wise, I think that about covers everything. There's a lot of things this amp can do. So we're gonna hear some sounds now. So gear wise, I'm using my Yamaha Revstar standard for this, which has P90 pickups. This is plugged straight into the amp. The amp is mic'd up with an Aston Origin condenser microphone as well. That's going straight into my audio interface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually do the preset one. Now you can see here on the first preset, we've got some reverb on. As I turn the preset knob, you can see things are moving and changing because each of the presets has different things attached to them. So I'm just going to go through the six different presets that come with the amp out of the box so you can hear those. The preset mode is especially useful for beginner guitar players because you don't have to worry about spending time tweaking. You can just pick a voice and get to playing. So first of all, the clean warm preset. <laughs> So even just in the presets, you can hear that that clean bright has a little more bite to it. The crunch preset. It's quite a nice crunchy sound there. So if you're again new to playing and you just want to get started, that's a great place to start. Super crunch. So there's a bit of delay on that one as well as you can hear. OD1, this actually has some delay on too, so this might be a good lead tone. That's quite a nice lead tone. And then OD2, this is just reverb, so this is going to be probably a good high gain rhythm tone. There's quite a bit of gain there, that's actually quite scooped and there's quite a kind of bright punch to that one. But yeah, there's a couple of different presets there, so there's something for everyone, whether you want cleans, like a bluesy crunch, or a high gain lead tone. There's something in there for everyone just straight away. Now I'm gonna go into manual mode, and we're actually gonna start dialing in some different sounds. So I'm going to start with the clean warm channel, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to enable the reverb. Segment two is a hall reverb, 
So I'm just going to put that on because I like to personally just have a little bit of reverb available. And I'm going to set the gain quite low because we're playing on a cleaner sound. So what I'm going to do is go through the six different voices and show you what they can do. And I'm also going to use the EQ ISF feature here to go from a more American sound to a more British sound. Now the cool thing with this feature is we can get all of the sounds in between those two extremes. So think of it like a mid controller, like a mid shift. So when the ISF controller is like this, we have a lot less mids, the mids are more scooped out, so you get more of a prominent low and high end. And the higher this goes, the more mid we have and the less prominence in the highs and lows. So think of that when you think of your different, you know, favorite amp types. Some amps are more of an American sound, more of a scoop sound, and then British amps tend to have a little bit more mid presence. So I'm gonna start with it in the middle and then we'll kind of move either side. <laughs> So you can hear quite a nice big shift there. Now, the cool thing with these clean channels is even though they are clean voices, they are quite responsive to gain shifts. So if I crank the gain on this channel, we're actually gonna get a nice low gain breakup. So that kind of gives you that, you know, small and cranked up kind of sound. This also works great on the clean bright channel as well. So the same thing, I'm going to play with the ISF feature. This one especially reacts nicely to the cranked gain. You get into a really kind of small boutique breakup amp sound. That's a really nice low gain bluesy tone. Now we're gonna go into the higher gain stuff. So let's go into the crunch sound. I'm gonna set the gain on halfway for this one. So when you start adding the drive sound to things, then that mid shift becomes very prominent because in the crunch sound with the ISF down, we get this really nice attack to the notes. And then as that's increased, it almost becomes a little bit honky. The whole idea there is to kind of find your own sweet spot in the middle of that range. Super crunch now.
this is where we start to go into higher gain territories. Now, obviously, I can crank the gain if I want. So for most rock players, that's probably all the gain you would ever really need. But if you do need more, you can go to the OD1 and 2 channels. So I'm going to go back to halfway on the gain for this one, and I'm going to increase the gain as I play. So the only one that has a lot more gain on tap. Now, when you actually set the gain to like the halfway point, you're sort of in the same territory as the Super Crunch. Where this one really comes alive is when you get to about that three quarter mark. <laughs> There's plenty of gain there to satisfy most people's needs, but if that's not enough, you can go to the OD2 channel, which is going to be more gain. So that OD2 voice there, especially with the ISF over to the British side, is probably too fat to use for a rhythm sound. There's almost like a bit too much low-end content going on there, but that looks great for a lead tone. So it gives you a nice fat lead sound, but yeah, I probably wouldn't be using the OD2 for more rhythmic stuff unless I was in that kind of central ISF setting with a slightly lower gain. That would probably handle some down-tuned guitars quite well as well, I think. <laughs> 
So now that you've heard all the different drive voicings, we're going to look at all of the different effect types. Now you've heard everything so far with the whole reader on. So I'm going to dial in a clean, bright sound and that is going to be like this. That's the sound we're going to be using for all of the different effects. So I'm going to start by going through all the different reverbs. I'm going to leave the reverb level at halfway and I'm just going to blend it in. So I'm going to start with the room reverb. I'm going to move that up to the end of the segment. This increases the size. Then we go into a hall reverb that you've already heard. Then we go into a spring reverb and then finally a plate reverb. So some quite long reverb tails going on there. Now the only downside to the way that this section of the amp is set up is that because we've got one control that's divided into four segments, you have a lot of reverb but with very little travel. So I mean, if we're using the plate reverb for instance, the cutoff point is here where the LED for three goes off. So that's minimal and that's maximum. And we've got all of that travel in such a small range. So it's quite easy to overdo it with the effects. If you're not really careful with the tweaking, you can add too much reverb. But yeah, there's a lot of reverb in that available. So I'm just gonna have a slightly more subtle hall reverb again. And I'm gonna leave that on while we talk about the modulation. So again, in the modulation, the first segment is my phaser. The second segment is my chorus and flanger. My third is my envelope, and my fourth is my tremolo. So I'm going to start with a phaser. This is going to increase the mix intensity. This is going to increase the depth of the phaser, and this is the speed of the phaser.
So the next segment is my chorus slash flanger. So this is the morph. I'm guessing that's going to be a morph between chorus and flanger. Tap tempo controls my speed. And then the level control is my mix control. So the chorus and flange mode is really nice because you can get those nice kind of shimmery chorusy sounds. But then you can also do some quite, you know, wacky stuff. Which that is where you kind of enter more into the flange territory. The third segment we've got is the envelope control. So this is going to be the sensitivity of the envelope. This is going to be the depth. There's no tap tempo for this side.
that's always a fun sound because, I mean, everyone loves a envelope filter auto wire type thing because you can get some quite cracky sounds. And the final segment is our tremolo. So the effects segment here is going to control the frequency modulation. The level control here is going to control the amplitude modulation. And then the tap tempo is for the speed. <laughs> So that tremolo is kind of more of like a harmonic tremolo rather than the usual choppy tremolo. There doesn't seem to be any way to get that typical harsh chopping sound. That's probably the closest we can get, but you can hear there's almost like a pulsation rather than a hard stop. That to me kind of reminds me more of like a, you know, like you would use that on the way to creating like a Leslie sound or like a Univibe type sound. Rather than your typical, you know, harsh kind of block tremolo sound. Still a great sound nonetheless. Now we have the delays. So these controls all do the same thing for the delay. So the tap tempo is the tempo of the delay. The effect segment is the feedback of the delay. So like the number of repeats. And then the level control is the level of the delay. So segment one is a linear delay, which is like a digital delay. We we'll leave the level on halfway so we get a nice blend between the two. That's a nice clean repeat delay there. If we take the tempo quite fast, we get a nice slap back. <laughs> Segment two is going to be our analog delay. So this is going to be a bit slower. I'm going to get a little bit more kind of warmth to the repeats here. <laughs> Thank you. 
At the top of the feedback range, you can hear that one starting to kind of push into like a self-oscillation thing as well. If I crank the level, we can get more of that self-oscillation thing. So you can hear how that's still going. I don't think it's going to truly self-oscillate like a proper analog delay, but that's pretty good. That's, you know, a pretty good way to get some cool effects. Next up, we have a tape echo delay. So the tape echo definitely gets a bit weird when you leave it, especially in the higher feedback settings. I think that's probably going to go on for a while. So that's probably the point there of kind of self-oscillation. It's slowly fading out, but we've definitely got something cool going on there. That's pretty nice. And finally, the multi-delay. Maybe a little bit more like I kind of expected the analog delay to. So actually, I take that back. You can get some kind of self-oscillating things as well from the delays, which is pretty cool. So that is sort of all of the sounds that are available in this. Now, obviously, with the effect section, you can have all three of these blocks on at the same time. So you can add different things. You can add, you know, if I wanted to add some chorusing to a linear delay sound, I can have that. So I can have this kind of thing. I can have chorus and delay at the same time. I can even add some drive to that if I want, like so. And that makes a great kind of 80s rock lead tone. So everything I talk about in this, you can combine as well, which is really cool. So you can have three effect blocks on at any time with your desired voice setting. That makes it incredibly versatile because you can have your ambient modulated delay sound. You can have your chorus heavy clean tone or your high gain overdrive with an envelope filter if you want. I'll even show you that one. I'm gonna turn the delay off. Envelope filter mode and the OD1 channel. You could do this if you want to. There's not really any limits, which is really cool. So this amp can do so many different things, but there is one more cool thing that I want to show you. And that is this, the Blackstar PB1 power bank. Now, a power bank is something that most people out there usually have. This is something that we carry with us to power our mobile phones when we don't have a charge point available. This is Blackstar's version of a power bank. This is a 10,000 milliamp unit, so it's quite a big battery in there, can hold quite a bit of charge. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I holding a power bank? So this one actually not only works great to power your devices, but it also has 
a built-in torch, which is very, very bright, as you can see there. That's really useful if you're a gigging musician and you're trying to find stuff on the stage. We've got two USB ports here, so you can connect your phone to this. You can connect your iPad to it, whatever you want. But we also have these power ports here. This one is the input for charging it, but we also have an output port here. And the reason that's important is because if I power down my ID core, take the power cable that Blackstar provided with the power bank and connect that to the DC output, this will actually power my ID core. So I'm unplugging the mains power, throw that on the floor. Power bank is going to go into the back of the amp and on top. I'm going to turn the power bank on, turn the ID core on, and now I have a black serum that is completely wireless. <laughs> So that means I can literally take my amp with me anywhere I want to go, and it's all running off this power bank. So the power bank will obviously hold quite a bit of charge. It's a 10,000 milliamp power bank. So you should get a couple of hours of playtime out of this, and then obviously you can just recharge it up and go all over again. That's really useful if you're going to use this for busking, perhaps, or practicing in your back garden. Or, you know, where I would use this is as a touring musician, I would take this on the road with me as a practice amp to practice backstage. And sometimes in some dressing rooms, you may only have, you know, a limited number of plugs available, or there's a lot of people in the room and you don't want to steal plugs off everyone else. I could use the power bank to practice. I could actually take it anywhere with me in the venue to practice. I could go sit at the back of the hall if I wanted to and warm up there with my power bank and my amp. So yeah, that's a really cool feature that Blackstar have added because I can charge my phone off that, but I can also take my amp with me anywhere I want to go to practice. So yeah, there it is. That is the brand new ID Core V4 series of amps. Like I said, there is a 10 and 20 watt version available. All the features are gonna be the same. And also the power bank will work with all of those features as well. The power bank is not included with the amps. So you do have to buy that separately. So I'll put a link to that and the amp down below in the description for you to check out as well. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments of the sound of the new ID Core V4. And also, like I said, if you get a chance to try one of these out, please do, because I really think the super wide stereo thing is hard to show in video. You really have to hear this for yourself to kind of get how wide it actually does sound. What I will say is using a power bank doesn't diminish the sound of the amp either. So the sounds that you hear when you run off a power bank are exactly the same as the sounds you hear off the main supply. It's a great sounding amp. I have been a big fan of the ID Core stuff for a very long time, and I've always maintained that they are my favorite practice amps. I've always had an ID Core to hand. I've got an ID Core V3 20 watt amp, which I love, but this thing just kind of takes it up to that extra level. I love the ID Core stuff. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the sounds of this thing. And while you're down there doing that, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching as always. Well.